made it to the spookiest time in Bates Nursery's history. What plants may lie in store for their maybe one, maybe four, or more? See all of the spooky delights with Ben and Carrie to the left and to the right. Don't worry, though. It will pass, just as Hollow's Eve gives us gas. <laughs> Introducing <laughs> Caroline and Ben. Spooky little child. <laughs> okay, it's fake. <laughs> Good morning. Afternoon, y'all. Welcome to Bates Little Shop of Horrors, round two. Bates Botanical Boo Camp. How you feeling today, Ben? Hey, I'm feeling great. You know, uh, I just got out of the forest this morning, and I can't wait to talk to you all about some spooky shrubs. Uh, if you got sticks in your garden, don't worry. We'll take care of it, you know. And uh, Caroline here has uh, been spooked up all morning, and uh, she couldn't go to sleep because of the uh, ghosts in her head. Don't you know? All up there. Yeah. All up there. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about today, Ben? Uh, we're going to talk about some spooky plants, uh, maybe some uh, some garden tales or uh, maybe your favorite garden plants that uh, scare you scare your neighbors and generally keep the kids, the kids off of your front door yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. scare everybody we're yeah. all about yeah. spooky stuff yeah. here at more Bates candy Nursery. for us for more sure. candy for us that's right scare the kids you get the candy Whew. little little tip there yeah. all right ben do you want to start off yeah sure i'll start with some shrubs uh maybe we'll go back and forth here don't you know uh yeah, so uh, one of my favorite forest plants here, uh, you can see front and center here. Here's a coral berry. Now, this is an uh, underrated native plant. Let me get her out of that quince there. Uh, yeah, get yeah out so of you can see this thing puts berries on that look a lot like uh, uh, maybe a mutant heart. Uh, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen Ninja Turtles. Uh, it couldn't have been that long. Yeah, there you You're go. You're only 21. Uh, but that's Symphora carpos. That is a Tennessee native uh, to the United States, and it has a very unique berry. Uh, really, if you see that sneak up on you at night, uh, you better turn right around. You better run. Yeah. Yeah. Run back to your candy box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Absolutely. Yeah, come on out. Uh, they're they're uh, really awesome plants. and. Uh, you have a scream. Yeah, have a scream. <laughs> Is it my turn? It's a yeah, gas. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go back. <laughs> Ooh. We'll go back and what forth a there? little bit. Oh, what do I have? Just a whole box full of spooky things. So we're going to start off by talking about how to darken up the indoor of your house. So if mm. you're not into outdoor planting, you like house plants, you want it to be spooky, you want it to be dark. We're coming into the dark season. We're already there, to be honest. We have a few house plants here that could just darken your doorstep in. Wow. So one of my favorites that we actually just got in, and she is so very spooky. Ooh. Are you scared right now? Look at that. Look at the look at how dark that is there. Compared yeah. to that axe. Don't chop it. She might bite back. <laughs> so we've got a Raven ZZ here. So unlike our normal ZZ that's pretty deep green, sometimes a little bit brighter, yeah. she is black. Yeah. Tyler's zooming in. Wow. I'm pretty scared of her. I don't have one. I might need to yeah. buy one of these yeah. for myself for Halloween. I'm absolutely frightened. Ah! Yeah. And easier to take care of than it looks like. Now, how you know it's alive and dead, uh, that's something you may need to come in and ask us. Uh, yeah. Is it dead or yeah. is it just spooky? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes it's fun to just have dead things around. Yeah. Well, maybe it won't hurt if it dies and then you won't know the difference. Yeah, maybe well, not. Care. Yeah. So, moving on to our second dark goth plant. Okay, let's, uh, what do y'all see here on the table? Uh, okay, quince, right next door to what we were looking to before, I'll, uh, point it out here with my old tree chopper. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a contorted quince. You don't see these very often. These spines are curled over like a witch's fingernails. Oh. Uh, I realize my accent is crossing a little over into Georgia from Canada. Oh, uh, you're hanging on to it, and I'm proud of you. It's all North America, baby. <laughs> That's but right. But here, let me show you this, uh... This flower of this thing is is positively putrid looking. Positively putrid. Ben, these words are frightening. Ooh. Yeah, these things will bloom. I should uh, like putrid <sighs> things. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Blood red. Oh, uh, this really needs to go in nice, any goth garden bed. Something that you would uh, bury over your grandmother's gravestone, quite possibly. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, really nice. The fruit. 
uh, I believe is edible. I'm not really sure, but you might try it yourself. Um, yeah. Try it and see. See yeah, how you is, feel. See if you make it into the next world. Yeah, yeah Quince. Quince is uh, absolutely spooky. Uh, throw it in your front beds and, uh, you know, it, it will keep the neighbors out. The curly leaf one is just all around cool, I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you what. Wow. I actually grew up with one of those trees and it was huge. Well, it was more like a bush and we would go into it and make forts. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was wild. Yeah. And yeah. kind of scary. Our very own Nora McGarry says, Ooh, Ooh. contorted twin. Yeah, spooky. Yes. I'm scared of a Nora a little bit right now. Kind of right. sounded like we said contorted twins, but you know. I'm shaking in my gourd. Woo. <laughs> okay, keep your seeds together there. Keep your seeds. Oh, that was a good one. I know you're full of good ones they today. Just keep ben has prepared. Out. <laughs> yeah, don't roast your seeds there. <laughs> All right, so our next spooky house plant, more of a goth house plant. So, if, again, bringing darkness into your mm. home. I am a fan of goth plants. I have a whole collection. Unfortunately, we don't have a black anthurium here today, which I do have one at home that my cat named Goblin, who's an all black cat, loves mm. to attack. He's jealous. He wants to be the only goth thing in the house. Isn't that an Iron Maiden song, Black Anthurium? Is it? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. I saw them in concert about three years ago and found one of my dogs on the way home from it, who's now named Eddie. Yeah. They could definitely use more plants at their shows, I'll tell you. Oh, absolutely. Less inflatables, more plants. But moving on to plants. What you got there? I have a rubber tree, burgundy rubber tree. So this is just a little baby. She's in a four-inch pot, but this is going to grow to, I mean... It's a tree, so it's going to grow into its space oh, yeah. even bigger, yep. and it's got these nice, very goth, very dark leaves. Very rubbery. Are you scared? Do you want to chop it down with your axe? It mm. doesn't smell doesn't like smell anything. doesn't smell like rubber, no. No, and actually, um, the cashiers up front today cleaned her up just for the show. Yeah. So look how she shines. They use some neem oil, so she's yeah. all nice and healthy. Yeah, just because you're dark doesn't mean you don't have to be beautiful. You That's know? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still clean. I'm pretty dark, and I still am beautiful. Sure. Things sure. And clean. are not always what they neem. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> Full of puns today. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and touch on one more house plant. Yeah, go right Are you ahead. ready? What does that look like to you? Something scary. Uh, it kind of looks like Hellraiser's face, <gasps> if you say. Don't if you know? If only it was <laughs> yeah. a Hellraiser yeah, yeah. alocasia. No, it's a dragon's tooth. Oh. You see that point? It could bite you. Put your head close. Oh. Get over here, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so, yet another goth plant. Great to add to your collection. Alocasias, I love them. Um, I probably have four. Mm-hmm. Maybe six at home right now. I don't have this gal yet. Probably going to add her to my collection. But, I mean, if you just look at her sitting with that ZZ, think about that rubber tree growing tall. You could keep all those goth plants in a corner yeah. together in your home. Yeah, you could really darken up a bright corner yeah. uh, with these plants. You don't want a yeah. bright house. Nobody yeah. needs a bright house. Yeah. Bright houses are for the birds. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, these will blend in with your black paint. Uh, On your walls, so you may want to do some light-colored pots or maybe, you know, a teak shelf to put these on for some contrast. I don't know, or maybe stay black. Or maybe all the way black, yeah, yeah, and have some nice lighting like we have in here and uh, really set the mood in your house for Halloween. I do have a black room, and it looks great with my dark plants. Oh, wow. Ooh, I know. Are you scared? Oh, You've been scared since I've we started. I've been so scared, I am almost speechless. Unfortunately, I am not. Honora, um, are yes. you scared? Tyler, <laughs> are we all frightened here? There is no Tyler here. I can feel the presence of Nora, uh, Pumpkin Man, sneaking up upon us. Pumpkin Man. Yes, yes she is. I'm overseeing the whole thing. No, <laughs> <laughs> keeping us trapped in here forever with these spooky plants. All right, Ben, what do you have next? Oh, let's dig into this pile of uh, of uh, festering shrubs over here. Uh, so I've got one in front there. And really, the name is enough to uh, make you just just choke to death. It is choke cherry, uh, one of our natives. Now, you can actually eat these. Uh, these do produce fruit, don't you know? But uh, you know, they might give you a pucker face, and uh, you know those sour patch kids you get really don't stand up to this plant. Now, this one maybe doesn't have such such a spooky name unless uh, you really do not like hugs. This one's called uh, ground hug. 
Uh, just because could be spooky. you know who doesn't want to go out and, and hug on the ground. The hug of death. Yeah. That sounds like when a zombie grabs your leg in yeah. oh. the graveyard. But if you choke on the cherry and then lay on the ground, then, uh, you know, uh, may want to may wanna roll around there a little bit. So. What's going on over there? Ah. Ah. <laughs> We're having too much spooky fun. We are. Yes. Mm. Uh, choke I'm cherry. all choked up. <laughs> All right, pumpkin head, Great settle down over color there. as well. So, uh, you know, whenever you're putting those pumpkins out, these are going to start turning red, blood red to go with your landscape. So around Halloween, mm. this may not be a bad thing to put out by your mailbox, don't you know? So, don't you know? Yeah. Speaking yeah. of red. I don't know. And blood. What? And outdoor plants. Let's talk about this heuchra right here. Oh, she's blood red. Her name is Fire Alarm. Sound the alarm for woo, Fire woo. Alarm. Woo, woo, woo. So if you are more into outdoor plants, perhaps perennials that are going to come back every year, you can also put this in a container, which I do with mine. You could go with this blood red Fire Alarm heuchra. Or next to her, we have a black. I believe she is Palace Purple. Oh, yeah. Ooh, can you give us that, a point? That dark combo. I'll do one better. I'll give you a shake. So imagine the wind spooky. blowing through that as your trick-or-treaters walk across your lawn. So spooky. Mm. Oh, even spookier with that axe in there. <gasps> but I love a good heuchra. I think they are wonderful. I put mine in my containers on oh, my yeah. front porch. Every fall, I buy two new ones, leave them there through the winter. Mm. They don't die back. Because nope. probably because my porch is covered, they stay pretty protected. And then you know what I do in the spring when I'm ready for my spring mix containers, which we are not going to talk about today. Dig them <laughs> up, put them in the ground oh, in yeah. my shade garden, which is growing every year. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I love heuchera. It's one of those. Uh, I've heard it called coral bells before, and yes. you know sometimes you can Sounds hear them spooky. ring the bell twelve times when it's midnight. Mm, uh, for if, whom the bell tolls? Yeah, if you listen really closely, you can hear them ringing out there. So, yes, you can. Uh, Late yeah, at night. Great hardy perennial. Uh, one of the few sticks. Uh, sorry, one of the few plants that's not <laughs> sticks for me in the winter. Um, you know, nothing else to help feed the fire, but uh, they are beautiful. Yes, so they are. That, and know. these are a little bit spooky. Yeah. Look at oh, those yeah. colors. And then just one more perennial that I have out here. I'm going to bring this nail into it. Ghost fern. <gasps> oh. So if you wanted to offset that dark black color of your heuchra or the yeah. red, stick that ghost fern behind. It's light. It's got a ghostly look about it. Unfortunately, it is going to die back a little bit in the winter, okay. as most of us do. That cold weather sure. moves in. We all die a little bit, sure. whether it's inside or outside. Sure. You know. So it's a winter ghost then. It's a winter yeah. ghost. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It okay. might even she die ghost twice. <laughs> In the summer <laughs> and the winter, no. <laughs> Trying not to scream into my microphone, and it's very hard. Ooh. <laughs> ah, ah. So, Ben, what would look good with that ghost fern? Ghost fern? Oh, well, mm. right next to that ghost fern, I could see one of these Lakothways. Uh, you know, good luck spelling it there. But, you said uh, it great, though. Th this one's rainbow. Uh, I'm uh, even though we got these these deep purple lights going on, these things really are deep purple. So uh, they're they're almost white uh, with a purple tip on them, and this is something they do in the winter, you know. Uh, so this is an evergreen shrub, but it's kind of got this spooky trail to it, you know. You uh, you see these up in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and at night, you know, you could get tangled in these things, and you may never be able to see your way out. Uh, your Lakoth way out. Again. So, uh, <laughs> Lakoth way. Don't yeah. want to get tangled in those shrubs no, in the mountain. No, Ooh. I've heard it called dog hobble. Now, I've never had my dog be hobbled in it, but... Uh, but it could happen. Yeah. Don't let yeah. Patty into those shrubs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keep Patty out. Yeah, yeah, we'd probably hear from a mile away for sure. Yeah, uh, and Sounds and scary. Uh, you know I'll go ahead and do a twofer now. You know, uh, right next to that is uh, we're gonna bring it back. I usually do this every season. Uh, barberry, you know, this is one. Oh, of, those are evil. Those aren't yeah. just spooky oh, plants. Yeah. Those are pure evil plants. I'll show you. We'll we'll pull this Lakota away out of the way. <laughs> oh, have you ever run into a barberry before? Probably. Uh, I have. Does it feel good? Oh, they're barbaric. I'll tell you what. 
Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so this is a barberry. Now, this is something we don't see a lot around here. This is actually an evergreen barberry. Uh, very unique growth habit. So full of thorns, you wouldn't believe it. I don't know if I can get right here a little more here. I think you can do it. Or on, Tyler can. Don't get hurt. Oh, hold on. Oh, ow. Oh, ow. Oh, ow. Ah. oh, it's absolutely oh. brutal. <gasps> so this here is barberry. Now, I don't this, like her. This uh, freaky looking beast is uh, going to grow in every direction. You can absolutely hedge it. Uh, if you just don't like anyone being close to your house. Mm. But these do get a cool fall color on them. I would say yeah. this would be a good thing to keep the kids away yeah. that are going to yeah. steal your candy. Oh, yeah, and they like to hide these thorns. So, you know, you might think you're you're coming up for a, a treat and you're going to get tricked as soon as you walk through that, don't you know? Don't you know. <laughs> Can uh, we yeah. see those thorns, yeah. Tyler? Yeah. yeah, these thorns I are mean, like needles. pumpkin Ow. head. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, uh oh. I got our lumberjack. That's yeah. as close as I can get. Yeah, I may. Uh, without getting pricked uh, uh, i'm just gonna hold it you'll here probably you're... just have to give up on it <laughs> so ben where would you plant this barberry if you, you know were barberry to get one? uh by your mailbox if you uh don't like getting mail uh <laughs> or under your window if you uh don't want anyone to uh come hither uh that would be a good, good or just option. in front of your front door sure sure this one's actually called william penn so uh to bring a little bit of fun and games into it uh, uh, this is, is William Penn. We also have one I don't have in here today called, uh, Julianne. Uh, but I she like to think... She doesn't sound scary. No, no. It's, it's more like a French fry, though. She will cut you up. So, oh! Uh, yeah, yeah. Aptly named Barberry. Uh, I think it's one of the best Halloween shrubs. Uh, you really feel it, don't it's you? It's know? scary <laughs> and it hurts. Yeah. And it's uh, full of hatred. What else we got over here? What don't we have over here? Oh, I don't want to think about that. Is it time that. to talk about man-eating plants? <gasps> Maybe I should leave the room. Possibly I'm just... I'm frightened, positively. Bug-eating plants. If bugs were tiny men, <laughs> this would be a man-eating <laughs> plant. So, we've got a little Venus flytrap here. The namesake for our webinar today, mm -hmm. Bates Little Shop of Horrors. If you haven't seen it, it's about a giant Venus flytrap that eats people. So these are cool. One thing that kids especially are very frightened of, if you put your finger in it, I know Tyler, we can't get a Watch close out. up shot. <gasps> it's gonna, oh, it closes up. Does that hurt? Yes, it does. Oh. No, you can't feel it. But what's cool about these, they have like digestive fluids in them mm. that actually when they close up on bugs, which are triggered by these little hairs within the trap, it closes, it digests its prey, breaks it down, absorbs all of those nutrients, and then opens back up. Oh. And the skeleton of the bug, I don't know if it's really a skeleton, but the pieces that are left will eventually just fall out while it waits for its next prey. Oh, wow. So Ugh. it's spooky, and it's got a story with it. And it's very smart. Yeah, yeah, they're mm -hmm. really cool. Let's get this one more time. Are we ready, Tyler? No. I mean, pumpkin head. <laughs> no. No, we're <laughs> never ready for eating plants. <laughs> wow. Do we have a close-up camera? No, uh, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> I'm just a pumpkin. I don't know what's going on. Pumpkins don't know everything, but I, they know most things. This I, pumpkin is running the show today. Yeah, I think we spooked the cameraman there. So we did. Uh, it's okay. We'll, we'll give we'll, him a break. Yeah, so yeah. moving on from the Venus flytrap, a very similar plant, another carnivorous plant, if you will, mm. that will help you with your bug problem. You know, tiny things that they can eat. <gasps> Oh, wow. Judith Hendel pitcher plant. Oh, look at her. You know what a fun fact about this is, Ben? What? Can you guess? Uh, Other than it eating things? Uh, it, uh... It can overwinter here in Tennessee. Oh, no, outside. don't you say. <gasps> I would have thought that'd be something just for my greenhouse. Nope. You can stick it in your frog pond okay. or in a bog, which... Ben, you have one now. I have a bog. Oh, yeah. You could plant yep. so many of these cool little pitchers. They attract insects down inside. They're going to fly into their death and then be eaten 
yeah. by the pitcher plant. Actually, the other day in the greenhouse, there was one that was brown. And so I went to clean it off. I cut it. And then I was like, there's something kind of big in there and crunchy. So I opened it and it was like the leftover pieces of a giant bee. Oh. It was like all dry and crumbly and just was like like a mummy just turned to dust when yeah. I opened it. Yeah. And I screamed bloody murder and ran out of the greenhouse. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like the Hansel and Gretel plant, you know, and uh, the the plant is the grandmother and as soon as they get into that oven they're 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 stuck. Yeah. Is it time for a close up? Mr. Pumpkinhead? I could possibly get a little closer. Ooh. Okay. Can we see it? We'll go for the bedazzled nail. <gasps> Ouch, that looks like it hurts. <laughs> Thank God I'm not a bug. Yeah. That would have taken me out if, if I was. If you're scared of being bit by eyelashes, this would uh, that, absolutely One uh, thing to note me. about them, you don't want to do it too many times because <laughs> you'll kill your plant off. They only have so <laughs> many closures in their life cycle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I don't think we have any but that sensitive plant. You know, that's one that'll move and then change back. Some of these maybe won't uh, open back up. The most dramatic yeah. plant in history, yeah. other than the Hartleaf fern, I would say. The yeah. sensitive plant. And, and dramatic in upkeep as well. So mm -hmm. uh, We'll do a drama plant webinar yeah. soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can do that. Uh, difficult. Uh, cry baby plants. Cry baby but, plants will make you, know, you want to rip your hair out. Plants. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But uh, today, you know, we don't need any crying. We're going for screaming. So, mm -hmm. um, no I, tears, just fears. Although, even though we do want to go for screaming, I did bring a plant for those of you jokers out there. Uh, I believe last year we did the little devil nine bark, which in itself is hellish. Uh, but this one here is called little joker. Uh, it's a little more fun-loving than the little devil, but, you know, I think it has a few tricks up its sleeve there. Uh, you know, purple, dark purple all the way through the year uh, will lose its leaves in the winter. Uh, maybe that's why they call it the Joker. I don't know. Um, but cool white flowers on there that really make that black foliage pop. Uh, cool little hedge plant there. I gotta uh, say, I do love this. Yeah, that's I little, might have to get one. That's little Joker. You know, it's got little leaves, little flowers, and uh, you know, quite uh, the little Joker there. It's, it's a little Joker there. It ought to entertain Spooky you little pretty Joker. well uh, through the fall. Pumpkinhead, what's your favorite plant? Oh, yeah. Spooky plant. Well, I think it would have to be one of my own kin. <laughs> The oh! giant pumpkin! <laughs> Perhaps Ooh. they sprout legs this year and follow you to your place. <laughs> wow, not the answer I expected. Is that the cousin but of so much uh, more exciting. pumpkin from Cinderella, or uh, are, they, are they related? You'll have to browse the most extensive seed collection at Bates Nursery to find out. Me. <laughs> 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 Oh, the internet itself scares me, you know. So, the internet uh, is a terrifying place, maybe, much scarier than any of these plants on yeah, this table. Yeah, maybe I could get my grandma to get on there for me. So uh, we'll we'll check out that seed Does she catalog. do your computer work for you? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She's a little up to it. I, I kind of keep my head in the trees, you know. Speaking yeah. of, if you have any spooky questions, leave them in the comments. Ooh, I'm scared what those questions could be. It's okay. Ben, what do we have behind you? Oh, oh, oh. Ha! You know... I didn't uh, think to look before I came in here, but there might be some. Uh, there might be something hiding. Ah. Okay, this this one we got to be careful with, or else it could send us home here. Oh no! Oh no! We're getting caught. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! Oh. Oh. Now, uh, you know, these things are so cool right now. We just got one left, but I think it's the best looking one. I bought one of the six we got in. Yeah, yeah. This is Flying Dragon. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of you old timers out there will know these as, as uh, fence row plants. They used to get mm. planted to uh, hold up your property line, and, and nothing can get through this guy. Oh, she's quivering. She's but shaking. It's she's got so these scared. curled thorns, and if you get up into there, you're going to be staying. Uh, I would say this Forever, is a good maybe. companion plant for the barberry that we discussed earlier this is true. to this keep is people true. off your property, yeah. out of your front door, yeah. away yeah. from your windows. Yeah, you could do a, you could do a thorned garden there, uh, you know. Um, Imagine know this with the barberry behind or next to, slightly offset, some heuchera down in front and a ghost fern. 
I would just be scared yeah. all the time. I probably wouldn't even leave my house. Yeah. I'd be so frightened. I love all those colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say my favorite thing are these green stems on this plant. Whenever it loses its leaves, uh, you stick a light up behind that, and it will cast a crazy shadow. Oh, that's uh, a great idea. Cool. Yeah. I still haven't planted mine. Yeah, I think playing with landscape lights, and maybe we'll have to do a talk on that one day. Uh, landscape lighting, you know, on those trees right now when it's dark early, uh, that adds a whole extra dimension uh, to the spooky factor. So, uh, yeah. And you can be spooky year round. Oh, okay. We got to watch Is this Is it too guy, heavy? Or else I'm going to turn into Scarface here. Oh, he's so strong. He's a lumberjack. <laughs> no, it's a dry plant. Well, I was very impressed. Hey, Ben, I have a question for you. What plant symbolizes death? What plant symbolizes death? Uh, pumpkin head, do you know the flower? answer? Nope. Oh, close. No. You'd be surprised. I am death. <laughs> no, you're not. You're right, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll stay in my lane. You can go into any lane you want to. A chrysanthemum. What? I yes. thought that was the sign of Thanksgiving or... Uh... Nope. The symbol of death. Oh, well. People like to put them on gravestones. Okay. It's a good memorial plant. But I was very surprised when I learned that. So if your house was built on top of a grave, is that why we put them on our front porch then? Correct. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Do you think your new house was built on top of a grave? Oh, we don't have any mums. No, no. Oh, fresh no. questions out there in uh, the wilds uh, of Facebook. Ooh. What zone does the flying dragon? <gasps> That's a great question. Grow in. What's the hardiness? Here. I believe Here. it's four to nine. Uh, I'd have to see. It's but, a fairly hardy plant, even though it is called bitter orange. Um, and you do get fruit off of it that yeah. are small and very seedy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't really have too much problem with the heat. I would say below, you know, 20 degrees, which doesn't happen. You, you may get some dieback on it, but... No, they've been planted for quite a long time. For, for how tropical they look, they're they're pretty hardy here. I have a friend that has one, and hers is probably, I saw a picture of her standing in front of it, about seven feet tall, and it's like oh, yeah. bushed out. Oh, yeah. And I don't think she's even had it planted for that long. No, no, they're, they're pretty hardy plants. Like I said, they look like they wouldn't be, but uh, yeah, they should have no problem. I'm not sure the specific hardiness zone on them. Uh, pumpkin head might be checking I, I would, it out. I would think four to nine should be about right. Mm -hmm. mm, well, I'm... if you are in Middle Tennessee, yeah, you can plant yeah. it out here. Yeah, no problem. If you're a part of this. Are I'm you ready for your next question? I'm suspecting that we have people not from here. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared right now. We'll give pumpkin head a moment. Oh, yeah. A moment of silence. Oh, it's actually zone six to nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so <gasps> six to Ooh, nine. Ooh, so. just a short little window of zones. Yeah, so maybe protect it a little yeah. bit. Um, you know, that, that probably tells me negative 10 or zero degrees. Uh, don't put it in a container. Put it in the ground. Put it in the ground, yeah. which I yeah. need to do with mine now. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But the pressure they've been planted for a on. long time. You should be okay. Hmm. Yeah. Speaking of thorny things that you want to plant to keep people out, what plant will protect your home if planted outside, not inside? Uh, well, inside, I would have thought it would be sage. Uh, you know, sage, sage purifies, this don't you know? This grants protection and also poisons people. I don't know. Double I'm, whammy. Uh, I'm all fog and mirrors fox in my glove. head. Foxglove. Oh, foxglove. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, digitalis. Digitalis, yep. yes. Yep. Great plant to add to your garden. Mm. Goes in the back. I have probably four that shoot up really tall. Mm. I mean, I want to say four feet. I could be wrong about that. I'm sometimes wrong about a few things, especially when it comes to measurements. Yeah, yeah maybe don't uh, plant those near where your kids play unless uh, you, you've got a problem with your children. Uh, you know, they, they have been known to be fairly toxic. I believe it actually stops the heart. Uh, yes, it does. Know, yes, it does. It will slow down and, your heart rate. And if you have yeah. too much of it. Whoa. Yeah. Kind of romantic and then uh, kind of deadly. So, kind of deadly, yeah. but also yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I love her. Um, what plant keeps demons away? Demons. Uh, and also one plant? more thing. No but I'm not going to tell you because it's going to give it away. Demons. Uh, it's not Little Devil? It's not Little Devil. Okay. It's very common. Garlic. <gasps> Demons and oh, vampires. Yeah. Easy Ooh, to grow, too. Easy to grow. Oh, yeah. Fun to grow, I would mm -hmm. say. And it's going to protect you from demons mm -hmm. and vampires. Yeah. I was a vampire on Sunday. Yeah, unfortunately, they mm -hmm. do not make a salt plant, so this might be your only option. 
uh, I think. I mean, other than, I mean, wooden stakes, but you should be able to get that from any good lumber tree, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to keep going with these because sure. you still haven't gotten one yet. Okay. And Pumpkinhead, I mean, if you have any gu guesses, ooh, guesses on what it could be. What plant represents undying love? Rose, I got this one. Nope. Uh, I I could guess a lot of things, <laughs> but I don't think I can guess that. <laughs> I don't think you can, Pumpkinhead. Have you ever truly known love? <laughs> no. <laughs> I heard there Not was a board all. once. You guys just do get murdered every year, so it's hard to know love in that short amount of time. Ben, do you have another guess? Uh, I thought Rose for sure. Uh, uh, Quince? Lavender. Lavender? Oh, we just happened to have You're lavender so bad here with at us this today. Game. It was sitting right there. I should have known. Look. Look, I'll be honest, I have to Google all of these trivia questions, so. Mm. Mm. Are you ready for the last one? Ready. Are you sure? No. I'm not. Well, we'll Ask just... me a question. Oh, okay. You're definitely ready. What plant invites the devil into your home? Mm. Mm. Philodendron? <laughs> I would, it's kind of a yes, but no, not. Oh. It's an outside plant. Okay. Grows very large. Tree. You can use the wood for things. Uh, has leaves on it. Crepe myrtle. Has roots in the ground. Nope. Well. Elder. Elder berry? No, the elder tree. Oh, elder tree. Mm-hmm. So what species is that? I'm not sure. <laughs> you know more about trees than I do. Oh, well, actually... Uh, uh. Speaking of elder, I do have an alder here. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Uh, you know, I just I, I just brought more plants <gasps> than we can even fit in here. Yeah. You brought oh, okay. so many. So there's there's alder. I don't know about elder there. Usually alder refers to uh, the, the shape of the leaf. Uh, I think we talked about this a little bit last year. This one's extra spooky. It's called Blue Shadow. <gasps> uh, yeah. Ooh. I do Isn't know there the a Blue Shadow. Gilla that's. Yeah, it's about as good shadow, looking maybe. as Blue Steel, but even darker, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, these things get wonderful fall color here, you know, right around uh, right around Halloween. So, uh, this, th this is an awesome one. Tennessee native, uh, Blue Shadow, bred by the, the infamous Dawn Shadow. And, uh, you know, they, they really give you that eerie blue, almost the same as this lavender here, when you really see it in the ground as far as blue goes. So, uh, you know. The uh, undying re love really plant. Really hard to cut, makes uh, not so good firewood, so we'll be leaving this guy in the ground. Yeah. You're not going to cut him up? No. Not no. with that axe, you're not. No. Father Gila, uh, like you said, some people call him witch alders. Uh, not really sure what witch is. Use Father Gila, but you know, there you go. I could probably use it for a lot of things. Which alder do you choose? Well, <laughs> the blue one. The blue one. Ben, As what is your I. favorite spooky plant? My favorite spooky plant, other than barberry, because I just can't get it off my mind. Oh, my favorite spooky plant. Hmm. You know, I do like really anything weeping. Anything weeping with those graceful branches. That um, dance in the wind. Yeah, especially, you know, if we have that sunlight going through them. And you get those right behind your back, and you might jump. You might <gasps> think there's someone creeping up behind you because of how much movement they have. Uh, I couldn't really get a good shadow to show you all, but, you know, here's kind of a spooky one. Oh, hey, we're going to bring some webs with us here. Oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> Okay, so this is a weeping uh, Alaskan uh, cedar here. Uh, they do pretty dang well here, but you know, you put a light through this and, and shine it up against a wall, and this thing will look spooky. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those now, shadows. Yeah, these things do typically need full sun, but you know, I can see them up against a bright wall. Uh, it's it's just that, that graceful uh, weeping habit just makes it seem very forlorn and sad and uh you know this time of year we could use a little bit of forlorn and sad so yeah there's not uh, enough sadness yeah. especially as we move into the winter yeah. why not be yeah. sadder yeah this tree mm -hmm. always looks sad and you know sometimes uh like a sad song it just makes you feel better don't you know so uh yeah this is weeping alaskan cedar i think 
uh, y'all could really make use of these. Maybe put your pumpkins underneath them and uh, have them be in a warm embrace. Yeah. Yeah. Weeping oh, trees. Well, that's sweet. Weeping trees, Weeping I trees. think, are my favorite for the spooky season. Uh, there's some that even lose their leaves, like uh, weeping cherry and uh, bald cypress. Uh, they look even spookier when they lose all their leaves. So. Mm-hmm. I have a weeping Norway spruce that is very spooky and sad looking. Goodbye. Also blue as well. So maybe mm. you put this with your father, Gila, and you'll have double spook. Double spook and double sad. Do you know what my favorite spooky plant What's is? What's your favorite spooky plant? It's so good. I talked about it last year. Oh. So if you joined us last year, I did talk a little bit about it. Brugmansia, angel trumpet. Oh, yeah. My favorite spooky plant. Um, it was one of the number one weapons of murder during the Victorian era. Mm. Every part of the plant is very toxic. How did they usually murder people with it? They would use either flour yep. or dried leaves yep. and make like a tincture out of it to poison people. You can put it in people's tea. Yep. You can do so many things with it. It is, like I said, highly poisonous. So if you're dealing with it, which I grow them all over my property, but I'm always very careful when I'm cutting them down at the end of the year um, and even sniffing the flowers. Mm. Just a little bit of the plant, like, you know, in your nose and your mouth can make you hallucinate. Oh. Yeah, well. it causes a uh, slower heart rate. Okay. Uh, it'll make you sleep. It will also just cause your mind to just go blank. Oh. Like I talked about last year in South America where it's native to, little old ladies will dry it and blow it into the faces of people and turn them into zombies. Not the man-eating zombies, but just like a, I'm a zombie and you can tell me what oh. to do. Oh, so do they come back to life then after that? or Once the dosage wears off, oh, okay. yes. Okay. But you don't want to eat any of this because it like i said highly toxic very beautiful they have bell-shaped flowers that are about i don't know what would you say is that oh yeah they're big yeah yeah they're about as big as a like a chandelier Mm -hmm. they hang just like a chandelier yeah Yeah. i sent a picture to our group thread actually the other day of one i believe and the plant itself gets to be about eight feet tall so it looks like a tree like a beautiful almost weeping tree that has these huge bell-shaped flowers that Mm -hmm. hang down they smell very sweet they smell at night which is spooky and very cool they don't really smell much during the day don't really know what causes that and again highly poisonous plant so yeah, good good i could always use more there's highly nothing poisonous more plants. to love yeah. yeah i have a whole poison garden section yeah. mm-hmm. uh garden usually beds. put that in the front where people can uh can engage it or do you put that behind a fence in the front yeah oh, okay. yeah yeah right before you get into my house yeah yeah kind of like Adam's no family. it's on the side yeah so yeah, nobody earlier, gets into it. Well, we were trying to brainstorm and remember what uh, Morticia was growing in her garden. She I was growing know. roses. Roses? I thought she fed them Inside. a certain way. Hmm. Or maybe she cut off all the blooms well, and Well, she threw would them cut away, off the heads of the roses oh, yeah. and then just keep the stems. Yeah, just keep the stems. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't always need the bloom. Sometimes, you know, you just need to cut off the beautiful thing and, and enjoy the... The stem for the thorny, uh, uh, scary thing that it is. Yeah. Yeah. Stabby. Yeah. Stabby. Scary. Frightening. Yeah. Spooky. I'd love to have a Morticia's uh, greenhouse. That would be kind of a fun. <gasps> oh, if only. I yeah. mean, we're close to it in the garden center. Yeah. 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 Maybe we can make a corner for y'all one of these days. <gasps> yeah. A corner of death, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, pumpkin head how do you feel about that i love me a macabre greenhouse Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. do a yes. little dance for us while you're on the screen oh. okay i'm coming back for yes Whoa. Ooh. monster mash Ooh. Over there. Oh. i'm just so excited learning about all these spooky plants i know yeah it's just the best <laughs> <laughs> so how where are we at folks do we have any questions do you have anything over there left None other than the flying dragon. I do have a couple. I got one here. I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, tell us about that you one. You know, you can see this one towering over my head like a, uh, well, you know, like the Illuminati, I guess you could say. And th- this is Illuminati Tower. 
uh, of, of mock Look at orange. it towering next to your head yeah. right there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of imposing, you know, and uh, it, it sneaks up on you and, and controls your life, just like the Illuminati. So, Ooh. Um, you know, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is a real plant, you guys. It's not a conspiracy plant? Uh, yeah, you don't even have to go on Wikipedia to find information about this guy. Uh, it's, it's a mock orange, so it should bloom from top to bottom in the spring. Uh, but it is, I will tell you what, very, very imposing vertical plant. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, secretive, but important in its own right. So uh, I love a good secretive plant. Yeah, yeah. Illuminati I mean, Tower. You wonder how they uh, expect to sell a plant that that scares you so much, but uh, it is. I'm nice. I am frightened. I've been scared since I walked in when I saw that. I said. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but this thing just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Only tiny screams here. Yeah. What is this thing that looks like a? Uh, it's got saw its teeth on it, don't you it know? It does. It's very sharp and spooky. Cryptanthus. Crypt. So it's in the bromeliad family. Okay. So you're probably more familiar with bromeliad. We actually just got these in this week. We've never had them before. I believe some people call, like the common name of them is Red Star. Something similar to that. Mm. Um, but I just liked, it's really giving us spooky vibes. Um, pretty frightening. Looks like a saw. Looks like it could, you know, cut something. Maybe snag your clothes a little bit. But imagine that in the center of your dining room table. Oh, oh yeah. Did it cut your... Oh, yeah, it cuts cut well. your. Oh, yes, it does. I'd say it's probably sharper than your axe, Ben. Oh, yeah, definitely. This Absolutely. Thing's, uh, this thing's dull as it could be. And my last spooky house plant that I have here today is a passionate one. She's full of passion. She's full of fire. Oh, yeah. Look at that glow. Welcome to the stage. Purple passion. Oh, my. Oh, my. She's got nice, soft leaves. You can't see as much... Well... You can see in the red magenta lighting, um, but she's very purple. She's going to open into these little yellow flowers. That's actually one that is done blooming. So they'd be a little more full, a little brighter. So with this dark goth plant, you also do get a little bit of happiness. Yeah, she would do great in a little hanging basket in a window. She's going to trail down. And as they trail, kind of similar to a pothos, you can cut it, propagate it in water to control it a little bit or let her go wild and live her best life. Yeah. You yeah. know? Those those leaves kind of look like bat's wings to me. You know, <gasps> they they uh, yeah, they, do. they have a certain mm. certain something to them, uh, and I kind of like that flower. It looks like it could fly it away. Dead. I think it looks better, uh, you know, past its prime. It's, it's you uh, know sometimes yeah. dead is better. Yeah, sometimes dead mm -hmm. is better. Don't you know? You know what that's a quote from? Uh, Chucky. Nope, pumpkin head. Do you know? Dang it! I lost again. I I sometimes I'm really empty better. except for being scary and tormenting. Pet cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts. I've now had you no all pets. Know. You've had no pets, pumpkin head. No. What about some squash bugs? Ooh. They are not my pets. They are the enemy of everyone. Ah! I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they like you either. I think they're out to get you. We I'm definitely get them back. paranoid <laughs> and I'm scared. scared in my little pumpkin boots. Well, that is a wrap up on my plants that I have over here. Ben, do you have anything else? I think I've uh, just about uh, scared all the plants off of this lot. I uh, think you did. Yeah. Hopefully not the customers, though. Yeah, No, we're getting some fresh ones in. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Don't I you think worry. basically what it comes down to, if you are into spooky frightening plants plants with scary names plants that look dark and goth come visit us here at bates nursery oh, we yeah. have indoor plants we have yeah. perennials we have shrubs we have trees yeah. of all the spooky varieties i know we are what four days away from halloween sure Oh, yeah. You oh, still yeah. have time. Yeah, get your black eyeliner out and uh, which i did you today know, come on down and uh, you know show us your uh, Show us your best scare. You mm -hmm. If you have a goth garden, we would love to see photos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'd definitely like to see that because, uh, you know, we can always be more inspired from Halloween to Halloween. And, uh, you know, the, the fear is only growing out there. That's right. Yeah. Until next year. <laughs> well, hasn't this been a lovely little shop of horrors? <laughs> We invite you to join us again after Hallow's Eve is past and dreadful.
wonderful Christmas comes. We will see you again when we rise, just as the plants will next year. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>